there's just two. Yeah, I think the wall's different. There's just too many blockbusters coming out nowadays. Why pay money to go see some Pixar film like The Incredibles 2 when the Illusionauts is sitting right there in the dumpster? Don't know the Illusionauts? Well, sometimes it's advertised like The Incredibles, then other times it's called Fantastic Force. Obviously a ripoff of Power Pack. Or is it called Four Fantastic Four Force? Oh, my mistake. It's called Freedom Force. Because if you don't show this movie to your children, then you hate freedom. This Peruvian animated film was given an American dub, co-written by Kathy Pylon, a producer on the Pokemon movies, and it was released by Vision Films. When have they ever steered me wrong? After all, they put out classics like A Dog on Christmas and Nessie and Me. I guess they haven't steered me wrong, since I haven't seen any of those fucking movies. It also comes from Aranax Animation Studios, whose other film, The Nutcracker Suite, is from this film's director, Eduardo Schult. The American release of the film featured the voices of Sarah Michelle Gellar and Christopher Lloyd, and with the film being released the same year Christopher Lloyd was in Food Fight and the Oogie Loves, I guess this choice was the most logical step. The movie is about a group of kids sent into literature to reinstate their endings after the French president wants to change the stories. Um, what? I expect a more cohesive plot out of a movie whose credits look like they were cut out of red construction paper. And don't think that narration is going to make you seem smarter. If you had told me it was possible to enter someone else's imagination, I would have said you were crazy. I would have said you should be watching Muppet Babies instead. Though I don't remember any part of that where the rope was strapped to Kermit's dick. What the hell is going on? It just thrust us into this action scene. Why wait for something to happen? Just pop up the title card! Who are the Illusionauts? Who fucking cares? It all takes place in Paris, today where creepy-ass characters chase around another creepy-ass character. Not sure why this kid has his own security. Say goodnight, boys. Dead. And while you were saving that kid, a dozen jewel thieves escaped. Here, kid, get home to Uncle Boozy. Preferral, you're stealing my food again? What, you don't think I wouldn't hear you in that mangy dog of yours? I called him Uncle Boozy as a joke, but that isn't much different than his regular name. We haven't eaten all day, Uncle Cognac. Then you should have made it home in time for dinner, hmm? It was easier to call him that than Uncle Shitfaced. Hell, the kid in the movie's name is Profiterol. If anything, to make the name Porkins seem dignified. Before the kid's parents died, they put Uncle Cognac in charge of them. <laughs> so he had shitty parents then, got it. My stomach is worse when I don't eat. Oh, now I understand why his parents left him with Uncle Whiskey Dick. Please tell me Uncle Cognac isn't leering outside the window of the sister. Oh, <laughs> phew! Another action scene. We're here to take you Who are any of these people? Best do a setup on how all this got started. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Da Vinci. 48 hours earlier. I can fucking read. And it's not just the kids who have stupid names. You've completely <laughs> lost your mind. Visonnier is the worst science fiction writer in the world. You can't go up against Da Vinci with that loser. Secretary Albino is absolutely right. Stop calling him that embarrassing nickname. His real name is Secretary Pasty White Man Thighs. They've created a machine that gets them inside the imagination of known geniuses. And it's called the Illusionarium. Because the person who named it isn't a genius. With this machine, the president can dominate pop culture all on his own. As if that matters, Disney's still gonna buy him out anyway. 
You may think this scene is gonna set up the villain's character. <laughs> <laughs> but then a bug flew in his mouth for no reason. Just when you think you have a good grasp on all the plot details and their motivations. You don't. You really don't. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the sea... It was only a matter of time before a giant octopus showed up. <laughs> For instance, a giant octopus clearly must lead to President Abraham Lincoln stepping in for H.G. Wells in a remake of Time After Time. These are all characters from classic literature, though with their names changed. This is sorta 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, sorta Around the World in 80 Days, sorta The Time Machine. So the movie is a mockbuster about people saving literary mockbusters? Hell, the mad scientist lives in Norman Bates's house. Still better animated than the boxcar children movie, though. Ah, old Dr. Insano. You can help us save the asylum knockoffs of literature. The minister's name is Minister Chateau, because of course it is. His cousin, Minister Eiffel Tower, was busy. What do we do, mad doctor? This may sound kind of risky, and it's only an idea, but I really can't see another solution to such a complex situation! You know, I would have been paying more attention to you if you weren't killing that guy. Turns out, shocking this guy explains to them the concept of restarting. John Bisonnier invented the reset button! Shut down, and start up! Shut down, and start up! Oh yeah, I see! Because it would have been too hard to just explain what a reset button is. Now they must find a team of specialists to go inside the books and hit the reset button. This mission is too stupid for the Spy Kids and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So knock off Jimmy Neutron will do the trick. Guess they should make another appearance. They've only been in 2% of the movie so far. Why the hell are they choosing kids to do this? So how come you picked us? Well, first of all, because you are all 12 years old. And that is the age at which Jean Visonnier's imagination was the most impressionable and receptive. Right! You're going into the mind of a pedophile, kids. Sure, we're gonna get our stories back, but we're all going to prison. Wait, why is Fart Kid going? Visonnier had serious gas problems, so you represent that. Oh, very serious. Mm, yes, authors of classic literature usually only spoke in farts. Also, it's a Tron knockoff now. Only a million times more awkward. Ta da! Whoa! Ta da! <laughs> oh, do you think this outfit makes me look fat now? Stop flashing the children! So, these are our heroes. I guess print really is dead. This movie's as epic as complimentary bread. The Illusionarium definitely looks like something that you do not want to stick your dick inside of. All the kids need is some fizzy lifting drinks, and they're off! They don't even need the machine! It's pretty easy to get into the author's imagination. You just gotta get renewed. Then Lincoln and a deep sea diver will come looking for you. Then you gotta get in a giant bullet to shoot yourself into space. Temperature outside is negative 292. Whoever can endure the cold best should go. We could wait till we're closer to the sun. That way it'll heat up a bit. Profiter huh? Yes, fly into the fucking sun and burn. Wait, so why is Houston the dog going with them? Houston, we have a problem. Oh, that's why. Fuck you! Damn, they picked the one day there's a hailstorm in space. Yes, leave Johnny McPastry behind. Oh wow, now who will communicate in farts? It's okay, he isn't really dead. You can't do it! Come on, Federal, keep going! Stay strong! 
At least the movie knows how space works. And it took them all of two seconds to find the damn reset button. Profiteral, find the letter R in adventure. It's the beginning of the word restart. And then along with star and the T in tours, it spells out restart. Another plot point pulled out of the ass from Star Babe. Oh, and the villain has a henchman now. Welcome to the movie, jackass. I'm not 12 years old. I don't represent any part of his personality, as far as I know. Oh, but you do, Torpedo. And as far as age, the only important age is the mental one. Oh, yeah. Don't tell that to the fucking judge. God damn it, I look away for two seconds and we're in the Sgt. Pepper movie. Whoa, now we're in the hot air balloon race around the world. Take care of those intruders. This movie is like if Peabody and Sherman were replaced by a set of toys that you wanted a Chuck E. Cheese. I hope they're smeared with bacon grease to get eaten by some lions. That's ridiculous. A dog can't defeat those lions. But a fart sure as fuck can. Oh, thank God, they're safe. We can try and help you bring Dr. Ferrero back. Don't get cheeky, big cheeks. Better not try any funny stuff. Find your way to the Temple of Anafon. If this movie were any less hip, it'd just be your grandparents doing a script reading of it. Is it still 48 hours earlier? I only ask because it's taken me two days to watch this film. I don't know if I'm watching The Illusionauts or that Brazilian rap movie. Where the fuck are they going again? Find your way to the Temple of Anafon! He's saying we should go to the Temple of Anafon! It's in the village of the Munchy Munchy! <laughs> That's a funny name! There is nothing funny in this film! You know what this movie needs? Cannibals. <laughs> I joke, but there really are cannibals in this film. <laughs> munchy Munchy is the sound this tribe makes when they chew. In other words, the Munchy Munchy are cannibals. That's cool. Everyone has the right to be what they want to be when they grow up, right? Can See? It's not often that kids' films speak up for cannibal rights. Don't knock it till you tried it! Turns out you can ruin an entire scene with just a shot of an ass. So where is this village? On the island of the Gerst, which is on the river of lizards. After you pass the tree of serpents. I'm sorry. You're a real asset to this movie. Get it? Asset? <laughs> Fart. I don't know what I'll do if this movie tries to get sentimental. Why are you over here? Oh, I want to be alone. Oh, well, sorry then. Guess that's the end of that scene. It's not. So how come you're not eating? I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Vegetarians don't actually eat. Everyone knows this. And don't give food to the kid who would fart by swallowing air. You can't serve me worms! It compromises my entire system! Even the movie Gross Out wants you to grow the fuck up. At least the fart joke is done for the scene. Oh no! Not again! It's great seeing the original version of that classic joke from the Brothers Grimsby. Also, boy, am I ever rooting for the villains in this. That's one down. Quick, Houston, be more useful than the heroes again. <laughs> the director's cut of Lawrence of Arabia is really fucking stupid. And when's someone gonna die again? I'll just convert my suit into a flying one! No! No! Don't! No! <laughs> Two down. Oh no, the Illusionarium is down, and a giant octopus is set loose in the city. Someone call the Watchmen! Oh no! Holly! Ah! All down! Ah, an on-off switch should be easy enough to reset this story. Or just watch the Pagemaster. 
With the cannibals present, I'm reminded of one positive note. The characters are less annoying here than in Green Inferno. Then the portal opens just before they get hooks jammed into their breasts, cannibal Ferox style. About that giant octopus, though. Please, ramble to explain it to me. Why would someone need to invent a corkscrew if there were no corks that needed to be pulled from the bottle? And why would someone plug up a bottle with a cork if there was no corkscrew to open it with? <laughs> Just give me a fucking drink! Great, what story is this one? I had the obligation to catch the flying train. So, we must be in the story of the adventures of the flying train. What are we doing on a ship? It's called Back to the Future 3, jackass. Good, more epic fight scenes. I hope it cuts to a commercial break so I can dump water on my TV. <laughs> Why did they just punch each other into Oda Gunga? And is anyone gonna do anything about the damn octopus? <laughs> Thank you, Illusionauts. You saved us. Too bad you're still gonna die. <laughs> That's for unleashing an octopus into the real world. Only one thing can save the city and these kids. <laughs> Voila! Oh, we're using Pascal's brain as our protector. Wild, wild west inspired science. And with friends like these... I'm telling you, they're in extreme danger! So tell me what you need! I'm ready to do whatever it takes! Confront any danger to save them! Just give me my marching orders, petite pa- Too late. They drowned minutes ago because of your fucking banter! Uh, oh, that's bad. You know, I'd love to help, but I have sharkophobia. I don't think I'm a good candidate for this mission since sharks and I don't really get along, but I'm happy to direct from behind the glass! <laughs> He's letting his friends die! Why don't you fart directly into their mouths? Ass-to-mouth resuscitation always does the trick. I never got the chance to tell you how I feel about you. I can't think of a better time than right now to tell me. Nicole! There's a love story now. Ah, good, they found the reset button. All they gotta do to find these is just guess where it's at. Ten times out of ten, they'll be right. Then everything's fine and I can go do something else, like stick my own head up an elephant's ass. Secret Brotherhood of Leonardo da Vinci. And don't even think about trying to get me to reveal our precious secrets. Not even under intense torture would I reveal that the grand leader of our brotherhood is a famous Brazilian soccer star they call the King. Oh good, they're in a Dan Brown book now. Oh no, Albino has a gun. There's no way they're gonna make it out of this one. <laughs> I don't know how this movie made it past 30 minutes, let alone 70. And how is the president just now finding out about the giant octopus destroying the city? Now we can start having some fun. And that's what I've been waiting for. Let's go! <laughs> Half the population is dead! Yeah, yeah, who needs the military when we got kids on skateboards? And you can never say this movie doesn't have callbacks. It's been more than a half an hour since I ordered my octopus, and it still hasn't arrived. Your service is abominable. You're huh? I was wondering where Uncle Sauced was. I really hope that The Incredibles 2 also has a story about defeating addiction. Things are gonna uh, change. You'll treat me with uh, respect uh, and stop uh, insulting uh, me. Am I uh, making myself clear? Yes, Profiteral. Stop farting all the time and maybe you will get treated with respect. Also, there's a giant octopus destroying the city. I feel like this is the screenwriter's cry for help. I beg your forgiveness. It's the alcohol. It's made me say and do a lot of stupid things. You should see his Twitter account. It's super racist. You know how much I loved your mom and your daddy. They were my only family. And when they died, I blamed you and buried my pain in liquor. Trust me, you get used to it. Oh yeah, about that whole octopus thing. It's almost like we didn't need the Illusionauts at all in this mission. The movie thinks I actually care enough for there to be title card epilogues. Due to government budget cuts, the Illusionauts program was cancelled after its first and only mission. 
Um, is this some kind of behind the scenes info? I already understand why there's no Illusionauts 2. Aristotle invented the Illusionauts app and became a billionaire when his technology company went public. I just now learned that his name is Aristotle. Carol eventually divorced her husband to marry the famous Hollywood director who cast her in the movie Illusionauts 7. Oh, but I thought the Illusionauts program was cancelled. Houston is in high demand as a stud and has bred some of the world's top show dogs. Um, that's either a sad ending or the dog now works as a gigolo. If this were anything like the real show dogs, then we would recall this film to take out that joke. And why wouldn't a movie like this have a shout out to AA? Uncle Cognac became a famous spokesperson for Alcoholics Anonymous, although nobody knows who he is. You just said his fucking name, unless he changed it to Uncle Club Soda. I don't care about these other conclusions, since they don't involve addiction. <laughs> and what? Well, I have offered to donate my brain to science. Science has, unfortunately, rejected my offer. Enough with your damn sequel baiting. You still haven't told me what an Illusionaut is. It sounds like what a flat earther calls an astronaut. Well, I suppose this is a 2.8 out of 10 film, but if you take out the period, it's a 28 out of 10. That sounds absolutely amazing. Too bad that's a fucking lie, and a 2.8 out of 10 is generous to begin with. And this is nothing like the Marvel comic series Fantastic Force. In a lot of ways, it makes perfect sense to watch this movie while on a Greyhound bus sitting across from a cyborg from a Terminator knockoff. And with the smell of the bathroom and Profiterol's ass, it's like I'm watching the movie in smell -o vision Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to insert myself into my computer so I can find this movie's file and delete it. I'm saving the fucking world. Profiterol went on to form GAS, the Gas Appreciation Society. It doesn't date much. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.